Not every beer has to be a double hopped IPA or a barrel aged stout. Today I'm paying homage to the simple pleasures of the easy drinking blonde ale. It tastes bitter like secondhand smoke, like a crowded party or a party town joke. I'm Martin Keane, taking the homebrew challenge to brew 99 beers in 99 weeks. And in past weeks, I've been brewing some pretty big beers. So it's going to be nice to have something on tap that is a bit lighter easy drinking and very sessionable. Now, in addition to whipping up a blonde ale, I'm also taking a look at measurements. And in particular, I have a new scale, a high capacity digital grain scale provided to me by Anvil, which I'll be putting to the test. But before we get to that, let's talk a little bit about the recipe for blonde ale. Oh, now, there are multiple styles of blonde ale. One of my favorites is Belgium blonde ale, and I'll be brewing that a little later in my homebrew challenge. But today I'm going to focus specifically on American blonde ale. So I'm going to use primarily American ingredients for the grist and for the hops. Now I'm building a beer here with an original gravity of 1044. So looking at about a 4% beer. My base malt is two row pale malt and that's going to make up 79% of my grist. I'm adding also Vienna malt, which will just add a little bit of malty sweetness to the beer that we want at 11%. And then I have 5% each of Victory malt and white wheat malt. Now let's talk just a little bit about weights and measures because it's a big part of everyone's brew day. It's not like we're, uh, we're taking some grains, putting them in a bucket and saying, yeah, this looks like about seven pounds. No, we're gonna use scales, right, to, to measure stuff. So there's a couple of scales that I actually use every brew day. The first one is my small scale. This is a blade scale. And I just use this for measuring the small stuff, which is water salts that I add at the start of my brew day and then also for measuring out the hops as well. Now this thing is $13 on Amazon, so it's very inexpensive, and it can go down to 0.01 grams. So I make use of this all the time, really handy to have a little blade um, scale here for that. But if I'm measuring out grains, this is not gonna get the job done, of course. I need something a bit bigger. For that, I have this scale here. And this is $50 on Amazon, but it does a nice job of weighing the big stuff. Now, it comes with a battery. I have used this hmm, for about two years now and have never replaced the battery. And there is also an AC outlet on the back as well. So this thing is good. Uh, the only issue I have really with this is the, um, the actual measuring surface itself isn't that huge. So when I come to put a big bucket on like this uh, it kind of hangs over the edge so it's a bit a bit wobbly and also it kind of obscures the screen a little bit as well especially if i'm above this and, and looking down i can sometimes struggle to read the measurements so it could do with being just a little bit bigger when i'm using big buckets like this to measure stuff out well i am pretty excited now to take a look at this high capacity digital grain scale that i was supplied by anvil to see if it fixes some of those problems. So inside of here, we have a manual. We have the actual scale itself, which you can see is much, much larger. So just to compare, much bigger surface area. And the other nice thing about this is it is connected to a separate device, which has the LED screen in it. So there is in fact a six foot cord here between these two things, which means I can put this out of the way of my bucket so my view is not obscured. Uh, there are mounts on the back here so I could mount it onto a wall if I wanted. Um, so generally this is really something that looks 
very much like you'd find at the home brew store. It's brushed stainless steel, so it looks absolutely fantastic. Now it also comes with a included AC adapter so that you don't have to run it on batteries, but you can also elect to put batteries in there as well. So if I plug this in, this by the way supports up to 65 pounds of weight. Don't think I'm gonna be needing anything more than that for my brew days. And just on the controller itself, there's only four buttons. It's nice and simple. There's the on off button, the tar button, the unit select, and then the hold button. So if I take my bucket, you can see there's now plenty of room, plenty of surface area on here for that bucket. And I can move this display wherever I want it so that I can make sure I can see it. This is going to sit proudly on my desk here in the brewery. I'll be using this one in future. Hops for this beer, well, this is not particularly hoppy. You want to aim for an IBU around 25, at least that's what I'm shooting for. And I'm using Cascade uh, for everything, for bittering, aroma, and flavor hops. Um, I picked Cascade for my bittering hop because you really want to use quite a, a low alpha acid, and this is about 5% alpha acid for your bittering. So, uh, at the start of the boil, I'm going to add about one ounce of these Cascade hops into the boil. And that's assuming you're brewing a five gallon or 19 liter batch. Then at 10 minutes to go, I will add in half a bag, that's half an ounce. And at flame out, I'll throw in the other half of the bag. The beer has come in with an original gravity of 1046. Now for yeast, this is the time where I actually am gonna deviate away from using American ingredients. Uh, if you do want to use American yeast, uh, Y yeast 1056 American ale would be a really good choice. However, I am using Whitbread ale. This is Y yeast 1099. I'm adding this into the beer and then going to ferment at 68 Fahrenheit or 20 Celsius. We wanna keep the temperature relatively low, uh, just to sort of keep this beer as a nice, clean, blonde beer. All right, let's add this yeast in and let it ferment. I've got a light beer for you this week, Lauren. I see. Let's take a look at this one and uh, certainly is on the light side, right? Lovely clarity with this one. Yeah, it's very uh, golden looking. You can see all those bubbles in there. Yeah, yeah, it looks a pretty beer. So let's see what we get on the smell of this one. Well, to me personally, it smells a little bit, it's got a little bit of fruity sweetness smelling to it. Um, mm -hmm. That would be like the, the malt, right? Yeah, yeah, um, I think multi sweetness. Yeah, I, I'm getting the same sort of thing. Um, I don't want to say too much about the taste of what it should be without you trying it. So okay. let's let's give this a try. Well, that is a good change of pace in beer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, after all of the heavy, strong ales we've been yeah. doing. This is refreshing. Yeah, this is good. Definitely refreshing is the word. Um, the BJCP guidelines describe this as having a soft multi sweetness. And I think that sums up this beer perfectly. I agree. Very pleasant, soft mouth feel, a little bit of sweetness, mm -hmm. clearly quite malty, very easy drinking. Yeah, it's, um, it has a nice taste on the tongue too. It does, it's not bitter aftertaste or anything like that. It's a very smooth, summery tasting beer. Do you know what a, a lawnmower beer is? I assume it's when you have one of those little ride on lawnmowers with your, your beer in the cup holder, right? Beer for drinking while you're mowing the lawn, right? And I think <laughs> I think this this is exactly what you'd want. It's very refreshing, as you say. Mm -hmm. 
uh, easy drinking, and yeah, really hits the spot. Yeah, it's, it's really good. Now, normally at this point, I would tease next week's beer to you, but I, I have a sneaking suspicion you might know what next week's beer is. Mm. So tune in next week when we'll be making a beer that's a little bit hoppier, a little bit more floral, and has a little bit more Lauren as well. Mm. Until then, cheers! cheers.